I became a rich bystander in a novel about real and fake heiresses, and my mission is to redeem the future villainous fake heiress and make her happy, to prevent her from turning evil. I took her home and educated her from a young age to follow the law and be a good person, a kind little white flower. Under my guidance, she grew up to be an upright person, transforming from a villainess into the male lead's pure love. Besides helping old ladies cross the street, her hobbies included donating to disaster areas, and she easily captured the male lead, David's, heart. Just when I thought she was going to marry the male lead and achieve happiness, the real heiress confessed her love to me, and then the fake heiress turned evil. Brother, if you choose someone else, I will have to lock you up so no one can see you, I later found out that she was dark from the beginning, and her pure white flower appearance was just an act for me. Brother, I've been dreaming about David recently, Willow pouted and complained to me. David is the male lead of this novel, and Willow is the villainous fake heiress, hearing her words. I knew the plot was about to start, I transmigrated into a novel about real and fake heiresses as a rich bystander, and my mission is to prevent the villainous fake heiress from turning evil and to make her happiness meter full. In the original story, Willow loved David but couldn't get him. In the end, a fire burned everything down. Now the plot is just starting. And due to the male lead's halo, Willow has already started dreaming about David. The power of the plot is indeed formidable. After all, he's our classmate. And he's a handsome one. It's normal to dream about him. I patted her head and brought breakfast to the table. Have breakfast, Willow. Brother, you're much more handsome than him. If I have to dream about someone, it should be you. She stuck out her tongue and made a funny face at me, looking true and cute, completely different from the gloomy and extreme villainous in the book. This is my tenth year in this world and the tenth year I brought Willow home and raised her as my sister. It seems my mission is going well so far. She is now happily and steadily entering university with a happiness meter of 60. Once she graduates successfully and captures the male lead, Reaching a happiness meter of 100, I can return to my original world. After breakfast, we went to school together. In this world, I'm only a year older than Willow. To take better care of her, I delayed my enrollment, so we are in the same class. Now that the first year has just started, the plot line has officially begun. The male lead David and the real and fake heiresses, the three important characters, have finally met. Sure enough, after class, Anna came over and took Willow's hand. Willow, you are the child who was mistakenly taken by the Chen family back then, right? Willow looked at her suspiciously and then nodded. It was me and you, who were mistakenly taken back then. I'm Anna. After we were switched back, we often met and played together. Do you remember? Hearing Anna's words, Willow smiled sweetly. Of course I remember. You're only a day older than me, and you said you wanted to be my sister. Anna excitedly hugged her. It's a pity that when I went to the Chen family to find you later, you were no longer there. I heard, I heard you were sent to the orphanage by Madame Chen. I don't know how you've been all these years. The Chen and Lu families are both prominent families in Yunshan. But Willow is an illegitimate daughter of the Chen family, while Anna is the real heiress of the Lu family, cherished by all. Their identities have been worlds apart since birth, especially after Willow returned to the Chen family. She was discovered by Madame Chen and sent to the orphanage shortly after. In the original book, even though the Chen family brought Willow back and gave her a life of wealth and luxury, her days in the orphanage were a nightmare for her whole life. Fortunately, I transmigrated in time and took her home the day she was sent to the orphanage. Willow smiled at Anna, then looked up at me with eyes shining. My brother took me home on the first day I went to the orphanage. I've been living well all these years Anna followed her gaze to me, and a strange expression flashed across her face, but it quickly disappeared. She smiled at me. I consider Willow my sister. Since you helped her, you help our Lu family. If you need my help in the future, don't hesitate to ask. Anna has the character of a kind little white flower who cares about everyone. But if she really cared about Willow back then, how could Willow have spent her childhood in the orphanage in the original story? Money can solve 99% of problems, and the remaining 1% is probably due to not having enough money. To ensure the smooth completion of the mission, the system provided me with enough funds, I really don't need any help from the Lu family. I smiled and shook my head, not responding to Anna's words. I didn't expect that in the evening, Anna would bring her mother over and invite Willow and me to visit their home. 
Willow was the type who couldn't easily refuse others, so she looked at me for my approval. I nodded, and we got into the car heading to the Lou family's house. In the original story, Willow stayed with the Lou family for eight years. After she turned eight, she never felt the warmth of a family again. However, ten years later, when she stepped into the Lou family at 18, she was just an insignificant outsider, watching helplessly as her former parents doted on their real daughter joking with her while being polite and distant to Willow, treating her as a guest. This visit to the Lou family was the first time Willow turned dark in the original story. She started to envy, hate, and even resent Anna, feeling that she had stolen her parents. But in this lifetime, I didn't let Willow grow up alone in an orphanage. Now she was not lacking in love and had become a self-confident and kind girl. Anna's mother ordered many dishes from a five-star hotel, but Anna complained. Mom, didn't you say you would cook yourself today? Ana's mother explained, Since Willow is coming to our house today, I was worried she might not be used to my cooking. You only cook once a week. And since we didn't get to eat it today, can you make my favorite chicken vegetable dish tomorrow? Anna continued to ask. Her mother coaxed her and nodded. All right. All right, I will make it for you tomorrow. Anna made a happy gesture and then looked at Willow. Willow, you have no idea. I think my mom's cooking is better than a five-star chef's, but she doesn't think so herself. I guess that's the taste of love. In the original story, Willow was deeply hurt by the interaction between Nana and her mother. She used to receive Aina's mother's love, but now she couldn't even taste her homemade food. That the current Willow was different from the one in the book, she smiled at me. My brother also thinks his cooking is terrible, but I love it. George, you can cook. That's amazing. Willow, you're so lucky to have a brother like him, Anna exclaimed in surprise. Willow nodded happily. Yes, my brother has been cooking for me since I was little. His food is the best in my previous life. As a low-wage worker, expensive takeout wasn't cost-effective, and cheap ones worried me about food safety, so I always cooked for myself. After coming here, I tried hiring a few nannies for Willow, but she didn't like any of them, so I ended up cooking for her myself. But I really think my cooking is just barely edible, certainly not any delicacy. However, Willow loves it and never leaves a bite. George, I would love to try your cooking sometime. Next time, let me visit your place. And don't forget to make something delicious for me. Anna joked. No way. Willow frowned. My brother's cooking is only for me. Anna's mother quickly stepped in to ease the tension and started praising me. When the Chen family sent Willow away, we couldn't take good care of her due to Madame Chen's relationship. We had no news of her all these years. We are really grateful to you, George. On the way home, Willow clung to my arm and sigh. Brother, when I was little, I often wondered why I didn't have parents who loved me. But now I think having you is enough. No one else matters. She looked up at me with eyes shining with a lie I couldn't understand. At this moment... I suddenly felt that she was not just a paper character I needed to save but a little girl whom I had truly redeemed. The plot of this book is quite old-fashioned and cliché, even though the male lead, David, and Willow had an engagement later on. He liked the kind-hearted Anna more. To help Willow succeed in winning the male lead in the future, I taught her from a young age to be a kind person. Now, she dares to help elderly people hit by cars and donates all her pocket money to children in mountainous areas. In class, she is always ready to help, like a little son. Yes, now Willow is kinder than the female lead. Besides studying, her mind is full of charity, almost as if she has installed be a good person system. Halfway through the first semester of college, Willow almost became the class favorite due to her outstanding looks and easygoing personality. In the original story, this position belonged to the female lead, Anna. Willow even suffered from school bullying due to her reclusive personality and beautiful appearance. It seems that character indeed determines destiny. The mission was progressing smoothly. The male lead, David, even started asking me about Willow's opinion of him, asking me to put in a good word for him in front of her. Willow, what do you think of David? I casually asked while taking Willow for a walk in the park on the weekend. Not kind enough. Last time an old lady fell, and he didn't help her, I was speechless for a moment, then asked, What if he likes you? What would you view? I would keep my eyes open. Closing them might cause me to trip. Willow snorted, Brother, didn't you say we should study hard in school? That David is different. He, 
He's the male lead, our target. Just as I racked my brain to say something good about David, Willow interrupted me. Brother, I don't like him. I just want to study hard now. Besides, except for you, everyone else in the world is the same to me. Why is this plot different from the original story? In the book, Willow loved him deeply. I sigh, realizing I would have to find another way to promote David to Willow. David really liked Willow, always following her and giving her various gifts every day. I told David that Willow thought he wasn't kind enough for not helping a fallen old lady, so he helped a hundred old men that day and got scanned for 88,000. After the male lead went crazy, the female lead also started acting strangely. Anna began to cling to me, almost every day, joining us for meals. In the original story, wasn't she supposed to like David too? It seemed like David suddenly lost his male lead halo. One day, when Willow wasn't around, I finally couldn't help but ask, Anna, why do you stick to me every day? Do you like me? I didn't expect her to nod seriously. Yes, as she spoke, she grabbed my hand. Why don't we be together? At that moment, I saw Willow approaching from the corner of my eye. I quickly withdrew my hand and took two steps back. Brother, Anna, what were you two doing behind my back? Willow asked as she walked over, nothing, let's go eat. I quickly explained, but Anna raised an ambiguous eyebrow at me. I thought this was just a moment of impulsiveness for Anna. After all, the female lead should be attracted to the male lead, not me, a bystander, but it seemed she was determined to be with me, confessing several more times. Now we are still students. I just want to study hard. Besides, why? What do you like about me? I rejected her again. Because you are a bystander not controlled by the plot, Anna shrugged and revealed. Stop pretending. In this world, except for you and me, everyone else is an NPC, including the male lead. David, they don't have their own thoughts at all, she sighed. I just want to be with someone who has a mind of their own. I couldn't believe the female lead, Anna, had awakened. I was at a loss for words. This was not a good sign. An awakened person could become an uncontrollable factor causing my mission to fail. Seeing my silence, she continued. I awakened at a young age. Everyone follows the plot without realizing it. The ridiculous thing is that they think it's their own choice. Until I met you, her gaze towards me grew increasingly passionate. You are a character outside the novel, and you change the villainous Willow. You are the only person besides me with self-awareness in this world. So why shouldn't we be together? I shook my head, disagreeing. They just don't know this is a novel. But that doesn't mean they lack consciousness. Willow has changed because of me. She is no longer the Willow in the book. She is a living person, shaped by different experiences into different personalities. Let me guess your purpose for coming to this world. She smiled confidently. To save Willow, right? Then let me destroy her. I was shocked to hear such malicious words from the female lead, Anna, after she awakened. Anna really meant what she said. She was still friends with Willow the day before, but because I didn't accept her confession, she started her revenge the next day. She photoshopped Willow's photos and spread rumors that Willow was attending a prestigious school funded by an old man and that my relationship with Willow was not pure. Rumors spread like wildfire, and Willow became the subject of gossip, but Willow was prepared. She directly showed her donation records and bank statements, proving that her money came from the pocket money I gave her. She didn't buy luxury goods. Instead, she donated everything. The rumors were quickly dispelled. After all, no gold digger would sell their body to donate to children in mountainous areas. However, regarding the rumors about us, she smiled and told others, if I can be with my brother, that would be even better. After all, we are not related by blood. I was utterly stunned and confused. Although Anna knew the entire plot of the novel, her methods were not very sophisticated. She even put cockroaches in Willow's desk like an elementary school student. Willow expressionlessly crushed the cockroaches with a tissue, but when she saw me coming over, she screamed, Brother, it's so scary. Come and comfort me. Me. I am speechless on Friday. Willow was on duty at school. After cooking dinner and seeing that she hadn't come home, I returned to the school to find her, only to discover that Anna had locked her in the classroom. Brother, Anna likes you. She bullies me to be with you. Willow said pitifully. I'll try to talk to her again. I sigh. Anna seemed to be losing it, possibly because she had known this was a Truman Show world since she was a child, making her collapse. But that couldn't excuse her madness. I couldn't understand why the originally kind female lead would act this way. 
but I just wanted to protect Willow and ensure the mission went smoothly. She keeps talking about main characters and supporting characters. Do you know what she's talking about, brother? Willow squinted at me, a hint of scrutiny in her eyes. For a moment, I felt she might know something, but I could only shake my head, indicating I didn't know either. So, you don't know what she's talking about? Willow sighed and said, but it doesn't matter. This should end now. She wants too much. This greedy woman should have disappeared from our lives long ago. I didn't pay much attention to Willow's words, thinking she was just venting. But then, I received a call from the police station on the weekend. Willow had been pushed off the library roof by Anna. I rushed to the hospital, finding Willow lying pale on the bed, smiling at me. Brother, it's done. That woman won't appear before us again. Some light streamed through the window, casting a glow on her face. Her amber eyes and long eyelashes left a delicate shadow on her eyelids. She looked like an angel these past few days. She kept saying she wanted Dan out of our lives, but I never expected her to use such extreme measures. Today must have been a trap she set for Anna, provoking her to push her off the roof otherwise with Anna's timid nature. She wouldn't have done it. I suddenly realized I might not have changed her. She was still the ruthless character who would harm herself to achieve her goals. Just like in the novel, looking at her frail appearance, I felt both heartache and sadness. Why? There are other ways, I said bitterly. She dared to dream of stealing my brother. Of course, this greedy woman must be sent to prison to be properly reformed. Willow smiled sweetly at me, then comforted me. Brother, it's okay. It's just the fourth floor, a minor fracture. Can you promise not to hurt yourself anymore? I suddenly thought of the original ending, where she threw herself and David into the fire to F him entirely. This was the girl I had raised myself. I couldn't bear to see her treat herself this way. Then, brother, you must promise me not to let other women get close to you, or I will go crazy. She looked at me seriously. My heart skipped a beat, and I forced a smile. We will both have people we like and have our own families in the future. But I only like you. Brother, you are my family. I want to marry you. Willow stared into my eyes, as if afraid to miss any expression. Just like when she asked for toes as a child, she would look at me like this whenever she wanted something. Making it hard to refuse, it would be a lie to say I hadn't noticed her feelings from me, but I never expected her feelings to be so straightforward and intense. Unlike Anna, Willow hadn't awakened. Her feelings for me overcame the plot, overcoming the instinct to fall for the male lead and breaking through her destined fate. But this isn't how it should be. I'm not her destined one. I'm just a wandering soul occupying an NPC role, wanting to return home. This isn't my world. I shook my head at her. Willow, you're still young. You don't understand what true love is. You only depend on me. She didn't immediately refute, but instead pulled a slight smile, her eyes cold and strange. So, brother, you don't like me, do you? Not in that way. I hardened my heart and nodded at her. Yes, I only see you as my sister, for some reason. Saying this made me feel a pang of sadness. I felt terrible and feared she would be hurt. This was the girl I had raised, but I didn't deserve to have her. I could only watch over her silently, seeing her go to someone else's side. She lowered her eyes, her long eyelashes trembling slightly, her gaze unclear. All right, in that case, I'll return to the Chen family after I leave the hospital. Thank you for these ten years. Brother, I'll double the expenses for these ten years and give it to you. Willow was the long-lost daughter of the Chen family. Initially, because Madame Chen couldn't accept the betrayal, she was sent to an orphanage. But after Madame Chen passed away a few years ago, the Chen family repeatedly contacted us, hoping Willow would return. In the original book, Willow was also brought back from the orphanage by the Chen family in high school and got engaged to David while in college. But previously, Willow always refused the Chen family's offers, wanting to continue living with me. This was the first time she had told me she wanted to leave and return to her original home. I gave her a bitter smile and finally nodded, as long as you're happy. She really did what she said she will. On the day she was discharged from the hospital, she contacted the Chen family to come and pick her up to celebrate her return. The Chen family even held a banquet. She severed ties with me and became the Chen family's daughter. In a way, isn't the plot progressing in the right direction? This makes it more likely for her to marry the male lead, David, but for some reason, my heart felt empty after she left. Willow seemed deeply hurt by me. After giving me a large sum of money, 
She blocked all my contact information and treated me like a stranger at school. Walking past me without a glance, Anna was sentenced to 10 years in prison, and the Liu family also fell into decline. Originally, the Chen, Ling, and Liu families were in a tripartite balance. Now, the fall of the Liu family broke that balance. To quickly divide the power, the Chen family and the Ling family arranged an engagement. With Willow and David as the protagonists of this political marriage, Willow is really ungrateful. Her brother treated her so well before, and now that she's back with the Chen family, she doesn't care about him at all. Yes, I thought she was kind before, but now she seems like a real ingrate. I heard she cut off ties with George as soon as she returned. I can't believe she's such a person. Occasionally, classmates would gossip about us. With Willow always being the one criticized, it's not what you think. I was the one who hurt Willow first. I walked over to explain. Even though we no longer had any relationship, I couldn't stand hearing anyone say bad things about her. The Chen family was large and powerful, with complex interests. Knowing the plot of the original book, I understood that Willow wasn't having an easy time now. Her happiness level had dropped from 60 to 40 in less than a month. I returned home to an empty house. With my mind filled with memories of Willow, there was no one to pester me to cook for her anymore. No one to chatter beside me. That as long as she married David, I could go back home. Wasn't that my original goal? But why did my heart feel so empty? As if something was missing. I flipped through her old chat records in a daze, but the conversation window was long blocked by her leaving me only a few rate exclamation marks. Under the Chen family's arrangement, Willow went abroad. David, deeply in love with her, naturally followed. Previously, David had asked me to help him make an impression on Willow. Now, it was my turn to ask him to report on her situation. Every time he told me she couldn't get used to the food outside and had lost weight, I felt a pang of heartache. So, I taught David how to cook a few home dishes and gave him recipes to occasionally cook for Willow. She still likes my cooking. She told me it tastes like home. David reported excitedly after his first successful attempt. I forced a bitter smile. As long as she likes it, make sure she eats more. Although she still doesn't like me, she agreed to let me cook for her once a week. David continued, I gave David recipes for Willow's favorite dishes. I couldn't just see her as a supporting character. We had depended on each other for 10 years, every day without her. I worried about her being sick or hungry. I sent her many messages every day, but she never replied. Once, when David mentioned my name in front of her, Willow threw a fit, telling him never to bring me up again. I didn't understand why she treated me like this just because I didn't respond to her confession. But without her, I felt like a walking corpse. Unable to enjoy food, I realized I must also have feelings for her but we weren't from the same world. I was just an NPC wanting to go home. This wasn't my world. After graduating from university, Willow and David returned to the country. Although Willow still didn't like David, under her influence, he actively engaged in charity work and was quite happy. I had no family or friends in this world. Since Willow left, I lost my life's focus. However, time seemed to erase everything. And within a few years, I got used to being alone again. But occasionally, Passing by places we used to walk together made me feel a pang of sadness. Willow, indeed the strongest villain in this book, transformed from a love-struck girl to a career-oriented woman. Within a year of returning, she took complete control of the Chen family. Willow became the head of the Chen family, but didn't he cancel the engagement? Even though no one in the Chen family could decide her fate anymore, I thought she might like David or was used to having him around. After all, the power of the plot is hard to change. However, David told me their marriage was just a contract. Willow still wouldn't accept him, but he had become more laid back over the years. He found doing charity work more meaningful than pursuing love. They were now simply charity partners, doing charitable work together every month. He no longer continued to like Willow, and they were better suited as friends. Willow said she has someone she likes. Over the years, I've gotten used to it. Now. I find charity work more fulfilling than loving her. After I marry Willow, I'll leave the Chen family to her and fully devote myself to charity. After all, rather than liking kind people, it's better to become one myself," David said calmly. His words made a lot of sense. To like a certain type of person, you should become that type yourself, rather than pinning your hopes on someone else. 
The Chen and Ling families are now the two most powerful families. With only a few months left until the wedding, the media have already started covering it extensively. I never thought that to find out about the person I raised myself, I would have to rely on the media. Her happiness level gradually dropped to 30, and aside from that, I had no information about her. The day before the wedding, I was kidnapped. I thought it was for money, but when I opened my eyes, I saw Willow standing in front of me. She had become more mature and beautiful compared to her youthful innocence from a few years ago. She had large waves in her hair and a delicate, appropriate makeup. Brother, long time no see, she squinted at me, looking somewhat condescending. But at that moment, her happiness level, which had dropped to 30, suddenly skyrocketed to 80. What was going on? Was it because there were less than 24 hours until the wedding? Congratulations on your wedding, I said, surprised that she had brought me here to meet her this way, especially since she had blocked all my attempts to contact her before. I am not planning to get married. She shook her head and lowered her eyes. I am going to disappoint you. Maybe you want to be able to go back to your original world. I looked at her in confusion. Had she awakened too? Anna told me the plot of this world. I knew in college that your kindness to me was just your mission. All these years. It was fake. You need to complete the task to go home. She gave a self-mocking smile. You always tried to pair me with David. You thought that only by marrying him would you complete your task. I guess the same. So I severed ties with you and got engaged to David. I wanted to sacrifice myself to send you home. Hearing her words, my heart trembled, and my fingertips even cut into my palms. Willow had sacrificed so much for me. Brother, I blocked you because I couldn't control myself from missing you. I wanted you so badly, but I also wanted you to go home. I was afraid you would lose your loved ones like I did. Afraid you would suffer like me. I couldn't help but reach out and pat her back, just as I used to comfort her when she was a child. No matter what happened, she was always the little girl who needed me. She bit her lip, looking at me hesitantly, but I awakened yesterday. I found out that your task is related to my happiness level. Didn't you notice that even though I gained the Chen family and got engaged to David, my happiness level still fell instead of rising? I nodded, that was true. Her happiness level had been low these years, but she refused to see me, so I thought it was because she was suffering in the Chen family. Willow, I called her name softly, because only you can give me happiness. I don't want you to just be my brother anymore. George, only by being with you will my happiness level rise. Since that's the case, I won't hold back my feelings anymore. Whether you like me or not, she climbed onto my shoulders and pressed her lips to mine. I began to face my feelings for Willow, realizing that I actually liked her too. Previously constrained by the plot, I never thought about getting involved in this world. But she was so brave, why should I keep her treating? with her in this world. Why should I insist on going back? So, I decided to give up the task. However, she didn't believe in my feelings. Even when I expressed my love for her, she still thought I was trying to deceive her. To raise her happiness level so I could return to my original world, on her birthday, I cooked longevity noodles for her and prepared a candlelight dinner. She drank until she was slightly tipsy and looked at me with a bit of confusion. Don't try to trick me, George. I will never let go of you, if you love someone else. I will lock you up. I won't allow you to return to your own world. I patted her head. Silly, I won't go back. The place where you are is my world. I didn't know if it was because she had been abandoned as a child. The Willow had no sense of security. Her happiness level rose to 99 but never moved again. I think she still didn't believe I would stay in this world with her. Deliberately holding back that one point of happiness to prevent me from completing the task. All I wanted was to treat her well and make up for the lost years. We held a grand wedding, and David handed over the company to us, then went to teach in the mountains, happily engaged in his work. There were even rumors that David had lost all hope after being jilted. But for us involved, we just saw it as a joke. One day, Willow and I were shopping when we suddenly saw Anna, just released from prison, holding a knife in front of us. She rushed at Willow, her mouth full of hearses, it's all your fault, you evil supporting character, because of you. I lost everything, go to hell, the knife glinted coldly as it stabbed straight at us. In an instant, I threw myself on Willow, feeling a cold sensation in my abdomen as blood gushed out. George. Willow's voice changed with panic. She held me, trembling as she tried to press down on the wound. Anna was subdued by security, 
but she kept cursing. Feeling the loss of blood, I felt my consciousness slipping away. Don't die. George, I was wrong. I shouldn't have kept you in this world. As I was being pushed into the ambulance, Willow's happiness level suddenly reached 100. A choice to return to my original world appeared before my eyes. Brother, if you want to go, hurry up and go. You can't die. Please, don't love me. I don't want you to stay with me. Willow's voice was tearful, almost pleading. I knew she was afraid I would die, forcing herself to reach 100 happiness to let me go while I still had a breath left. But if I chose to go back, would I never see her again? I didn't know if this body could survive in this world, but if I went back, I would lose her forever. I decided to gamble and gave up the option to return. Either die or live and stay with her. I couldn't accept a world without Willow. It would be better to die. With that thought, I lost consciousness when I woke up. I saw Willow sitting by the bed with swollen eyes. George, are you an idiot? As she spoke, tears streamed down her face again. I raised my hand to wipe the tears from her cheek. Why are you crying? If that knife had gone to centimeters deeper, you wouldn't have survived. She held my hand. Why didn't you go back? You could have at that time. I interrupted her. A world without you is no different from being dead. Her eyes were red. Looking at me like a wronged little rabbit, now do you believe I really love you? I'm not going back. I intertwined my fingers with hers. She nodded and then gently kissed my cheek. George, I love you. I love you too. You are my whole world. Even if I give up everything, I will never give up on you. 